Mark Reed. This is my story right here. And I want my legacy. I want all of y'all to be a part of my legacy. So y'all living it right now, each and every day. Everybody living it. Y'all part of something. Y'all part of something. You have come to know him as Starberry. Synonymous with success, Stefan Marbury is no stranger to fame and accolades. All ACC first team as a freshman at Georgia Tech University. Only the fifth freshman in NCAA history to do so. Selected fourth in the 1996 NBA draft, widely known as one of the greatest draft classes in NBA history. Two-time NBA All-Star, two-time All-NBA selection. All-time single game Team USA Olympic scoring leader with 31 points against Spain in 2004. Not bad considering who preceded him. 31 points, 31 points. One of only two players in NBA history to average 20 points per game and eight assists per game over an entire career. Stefan Marbury and Oscar Robertson. After playing for the Timberwolves, Nets, and Suns, on January 5th, 2004, Stefan would return home to where it all began. The garden. The garden. The garden. But long before Stefan would be the gatekeeper of Madison Square, he would learn his skills in another garden, in Coney Island. You know the stats, but the real story is a family affair. Five brothers in Brooklyn would all attend Division I NCAA schools, a feat that had only been accomplished once nearly a century ago. Century ago. Some called it a dynasty. dynasty. However, one solitary quest eluded the five brothers winning the New York City High School Basketball City Championship. This is the Marbury Dynasty. The, Marbury Dynasty. the story of Stephon Marbury. Long ago, Coney Island was a beach resort. The Cyclone roller coaster was the crown jewel of one of America's most famous amusement parks. But these days, there isn't much amusing about Coney Island. Oh, we in Coney Island, the last stop on all trains. Growing up in the ghetto is, is very hard. It's like, it's real hard around here. Lots of stuff happen, whatever. This is the hug. Shooting and people doing drugs, selling drugs. And there's a lot of distraction around here. Well, we all grew up in Coney Island, Brooklyn, Brooklyn area, New York, rough, rough area. When I first went to Coney Island to visit stuff, it was a new experience for me. It was crazy, man, going and walking into the, the tall building, you know, a little bitty apartment with so many people. Going to the projects in Coney Island, that was a trip. Uh, even though I'm from the Bronx, that was quite an experience. Growing up in Coney Island was an honor because it made us who we are today. Coney Island is like everywhere else. I mean, you know, you have drugs, you have violence. Crack epidemic started to come in a little more. So it was adventurous. The Marbury family simply saw Coney Island as home. You can't stop some things. You can't stop what is, really. And that's the situation that, that my children were confronted with. It was a very nice place to me because I grew up there as a child. I was born there. I had all of my children there, all my seven children there. But the kids that, were, that grew up there looked out for each other. It does take a village to raise a child. They had, had problems there. It made me appreciate, you know, him more because obviously you have to deal with some adverse situations. You just try to make sure that your children and the children around you don't get involved like that. There are strong women in the Marbury home, and for child number six, there was plenty of nurturing. We just, um, we just did the best we could. Growing up in Coney Island um, was the best thing that, that probably could ever have happened to me. And the atmosphere that my mother created in our household, she always made us feel like if you have love inside your home and you have care, it doesn't matter where you live at. The only name that mattered in this family was Marbury. The mission was very clear. Uh, I like to say thanks to my beautiful black queen mother, my father, for my brothers, my beautiful two sisters. I just want to say thanks to everybody. Let us do it together. We can do it together. It was never I in our household. It was always we. We had a lot of love for each other. So I think that's what pulled us through. My sister Stephanie was like, she's my everything. She's like my mother. Well, she said to me, she said, Mommy, if you name him after me, I'll take care of him. And my mother was on child number six. So you know, she was like, 
Oh yeah? No problem. Bing. And she was true to her word. So I remember when you become a teenager and you want to chase boys and do different things, and now you got this four and five year old that I would literally have to sneak out to get away from. Pampers, everything, she did all of that. My mom said, you said if you name him after you, I said, change his name. So that is how he got his name, Stephon Xavier Marbury. Two-time NBA champion Kenny Smith is a legend from the same hard knock streets of New York. A basketball legend who passed the point guard tradition eventually down to Stefan. Yeah, I, I played, and you know, I played against various eras with, you know, seeing his brothers play. And it's a basketball family. Uh, you know, everybody in, the, in his family touched the basketball. It was That was the way of life. The inspiration part and the temptation of not playing basketball, it always collided. Because if you ever thought about not playing basketball, you're going to get your head knocked off. <laughs> That's just how I went in my family. Tom Konchalski was named one of the most influential people in sports by New York Magazine. For decades now, he's published reports on high school basketball players throughout the country. His mind is like a steel trap as far as high school basketball stats and general information goes. He knows of the Marbury legacy very well. The oldest brother, Eric, his nickname was Sky Door. Eric was the best athlete of the bunch. He was an extraterrestrial athlete and went to the University of Georgia, was there one year ahead of Dominique and played with Dominique Wilkins. Then Donald came along, got out of Lincoln in 82, went to a junior college, ended up going to Texas A&M, and he was a little more of a guard than, than uh, Eric was. He was Sky Pup, they called him. The third one, Norman, who got out in 1990, was an All-City player a couple of times, signed with Tennessee, didn't end up there, ended up playing briefly for St. Francis of Brooklyn. He was, uh, he was more of a guard than even Donald, and uh, from an early age, he was projected as the best up to that point. Together, the three oldest brothers, Eric, Don, and Norman, formed a pyramid of basketball excellence. There are three sides to a pyramid. Number three is, de is definitely, it's a number that's been with us Forever. The number Marbury's number three. It was a traditional number and each boy wore it. With respect and pride. It's not a number that was just given to us. It's a reason why we wear this number, because it represents a lot of power. As great as the elder Marbury's were, the high school championship eluded them. Stefan and Zach would soon attend high school together where Stefan would don the mystical number three in the Marbury family's relentless attempt to bring the city championship where it belonged, with the Marbury family into Lincoln High School of Coney Island. The Marbury brothers had unique insight as to what it took to make it to the NBA. One brother would ultimately benefit from the blood, sweat, and tears of the amazing family legacy. Well, Steph became the benefit of all the others' smaller mistakes. Some of them, some one of the brothers weren't as, wasn't a good as maybe a good ball handler. One, so they they put that on the next one. Then the next one comes along, and he's a good ball handler. But maybe his jump shot was a lot. Well, okay, we're gonna work on the ball handling. Step was the finished product. He became the finished product, and and and, and fortunate the mistakes of his brothers. If it wasn't for his brother, Step wouldn't be the player he is because they I think fine tuned him, knowing the things that they needed in his in their games, which which is a great benefit to have. I kind of like to think of myself as a combination of all of their games intertwined into one. Eric Marbury was drafted number two in the sixth round of the 1982 NBA draft by the San Diego Clippers. Don Marbury was a standout for the Aggies of Texas A&M. In his junior year, he was selected as Southwest Conference Player of the Year. Norman, the best athlete of the family, was hampered by academic problems and bounced around from school to school, labeling him as inconsistent to scouts. And young Moses, or Zach, enjoyed success at the University of Rhode Island. So much so, he declared early for the 2001 NBA draft. Bound to be the second Marbury to make it to the league, but to the surprise of many, Zach went undrafted. Today, he's trying out for many D-League teams bent on making it into the league. Emmanuel Book Richardson is the Director of Basketball Operations at the world-famous Gauchos of the Amateur Athletic Union, or AAU. Tom Kachowski, I remember saying this in the, in the, in the five-star camp that you have a better chance at being a brain surgeon than playing in the NBA. You have a better chance at being struck by lightning than playing in the NBA. There are 400 jobs in the NBA. There are over 330, there are over 300 Division I 
uh, colleges and universities. There are another about 200, 300 Division II. Then there's Division Three. Then there's NAIA Division One, Two, and Three. And what about the guys who are already in the league? So I think a lot of our kids don't realize that you know this. It's almost like winning a lottery to, to to be put or thrusted into that position. New York in itself, as great and as beautiful a, a, as as it can be, as much as I love this place, there's just so many um, rigors that you have to go through as a child just to say, hey, I'm at school. So um, I, I think just, just being in New York, I think if the Marbury's were in North Carolina, um, the competition probably wasn't the same there, but I think God blessed that family with a lot of talent. I think you have four boys in the NBA. They could all could have been NBA ball players. They all know that. They all know that. But like we say, we got caught up in life, all right? In some situations that it was that we couldn't get out of. We could, but at the time, it's... We were kids, you know, growing up. So, um, but that's where Stefan Marbury took that part and, made it, and said, I'm gonna make it. Why? Of course, this is the obvious question about the Marbury brothers not making it to the basketball plateau. However, for this family, their goal was achieved through one Marbury winning. Well, I think that they all equally had a great influence on Stefan. I mean, if, if, if I can say anyone in particular, it would probably be the three oldest because it was through their challenges and their shortfalls that he actually learned. And I think that helped him to, to actually realize not just his dream, but a family dream of having one of my brothers play in the NBA. When the question of the why comes into play for the Marbury boys, emotions run high. His mind was different from mine. He was hungrier than me. That's why he went right in. He was, he was, he was at it. He knew that he had to do something in order for my family to be where we are today. I trained very hard, but I wanted to be very rich. Beyond your imagination. Almost like a zillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> there were other choices on the streets of Coney Island, but some of those choices left many without a choice. Eric stood tall and made the right choices. His little brothers followed. We lived in the ghetto. We didn't have anything. We worked on the beach and we went to school. We was honest kids. We didn't take guns and we didn't take drugs to try to make money. We could have, but we, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. That's another part of me. But we ain't never had nothing. You know, when Seth went to high school, he was like, everybody yo, go right here with his 10 cents, get his dollar sometime from my mother, get his cookie and his milk, and now was it, keep moving. Stefan was aware of the pitfalls as a very young boy. He was focused, driven by love, and wanting the best for his family. And it's like one Christmas, we ain't have no tree, man. We had to put like one of the little rinky dink trees up that you make that you stick inside the hose, a little green, you p punch them in. I knew that it was hard for my mother, because I seen it. I seen her walking in, the, in blizzards, you know, walking to go to work, walking from kids to go take care of kids. You know what I'm saying? So I, I witnessed that, where the whole the whole project area is covered with, with white, and you only see her footprints. That's what pushed me. That's what pushed me. That's what got me out of the hood. The Marbury ultimate basketball dream was to play in Madison Square Garden. In the meantime, they would plant their seeds in the concrete of Coney Island where their imagination bloomed and their desire was born. And you could look right out the window from outside of the buildings and you could see the court. Eric was the architect and he inspired the younger brothers to believe in greatness. 